Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, large and in charge of my one and only self, just me, lonely old me. Taking myself up off the shelf to discover my greatest eternal, internal wealth to get to the best version of my eternal heavenly self. Hopefully you're doing the same thing for you, but you know what it is that we do. It's been about two weeks since we've seen you. But it's Speak Grunt. We back to speak to you. Me and my man Whiskey Charlie and alone with all the other 11 Bs who just happen to watch this thing that they see. Whiskey Charlie, happy belated birthday to you, brother. Happy belated yeah. birthday. And before I forget, this may not be your for your kids, but your kids will be blessed by it. Some of the words they might hear you may not like, but it'll be okay. We attempt to keep it. I attempt to keep it clean. Whiskey Charlie just let it go dirty all over the place. But anyhow, <laughs> if he bring his kids around, your kids will be fine too. So you know what we're about to do. We grunts. We about to speak to you. We hope you come through and you speak too. That's Whiskey right. Charlie, what's been going on with you? Uh, you know, same old, same old, you know, just work, work and work. Actually, I think the uh more recent, not so many uh, home projects lately. I think that's why my body builds up with energy. I haven't been sleeping much lately. I probably sleep like anywhere from three to four hours a day and uh, get up and go to work and do work until I get home and hang out with the family and just sit around. That's probably also where my weight gain is coming from because ain't no projects going on. Why but you also, no you, you got to have money first. Man, that's a very true statement there. Yeah, I mean, money hasn't changed, but, you know, at the beginning of the year, it's always, uh, I don't know, of course, after Christmas, you know, and then everything else starts falling in, and then you're waiting on taxes, and then bills seem to increase, and fucking gas prices ain't getting no damn better. Hey, Shit, lumber yeah. prices go back up. It's everything, man, everything's going up, so you better <laughs> you gotta find a backup plan right now. Inflation is something else right now, brother. Man, I'm telling and you. Inflation is something else right now, man. Uh, let me see here where I can share this to as we get ready to do what we do. Yeah, inflation, man. You're, you're sitting there talking about inflation, man. Everything. I mean, it's, it is crazy. Yeah. Um, but people are still spending money, though. You know, if you you can't even go on strike on spending money and say, hey, I ain't going to pay this shit. Guess what? You're going to need gas to get to work. Oh, they, absolutely. They, 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 you're gonna need food to eat, so they could jack the prices up on it. You ain't like you're just out there, you know, cropping your own food and killing your own animals to you know live off of. So they know what they jack the prices up on. They jack the prices up on things that are doing well. Yeah, you know, we we're kind of talking about some of this stuff. Well, not just the inflation, but well, and a little bit we were talking about the inflation. You know, we we're talking about the war and things going on in Ukraine. And I guess we might touch on a little bit of that too. And we were talking about uh, America getting a lot of their, their, their fuel source, their oil source from countries like Russia and other places. And it's like, yo man, maybe we should just start drilling again here in our own country. And then we won't have to worry about these gas prices going through the roof. Hmm. <laughs> perfect world situation i mean if we didn't just like you know when a certain individual came into the presidency and decided to get rid of the fucking fracking and, and all that other stuff and say hey we're gonna the pipelines in the united states i mean i mean this is to me truthfully i think it's him just pushing more because he's all about coming in and wanting to push electric cars and bullshit like that this is the way he's doing it now he's just gonna blame it on somebody else he's gonna blame it on russia and that's where we get oil from but we have enough fucking oil on our own to survive for 50 to 60 years, but he don't want to use that. He wants to push people into, oh, electric this, electric that, man. If you want electric that bad, use it your goddamn self. I don't want to use electric. I don't trust it. And you get, power goes out, you're done. And I mean, here's the thing about that. I get it if you want to get to a cleaner energy source, but you have to do it over a period of time. You can't just cut down everything you've been using for the last hundred some odd years and then automatically think you're going to switch over to electric. Everybody not prepared for that. We don't even have grid strong enough to switch over to electric to charge all these vehicles and run all these things to be going into green energy right away. I don't I know. Think, but I'm not the smartest no. dude, so I don't know. You don't. You got people like me that like to watch a lot of porn. That takes a lot of energy. Man. <laughs> yeah, we we know. 
Your, your and, poor and, 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 always affects the show. It, it winds up yeah. on, uh, we get the weirdest people following us on YouTube. Every time you start talking about this porn stuff you do. <laughs> hey, you got to think, I, I use oil as my lube, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, every now and then some CLP, you know? <laughs> <laughs> when you run low, you got to use what you got. <laughs> no, nah, man, you just got to go dry out for that, man. Not the CLP, <laughs> man. The CLP whiskey, Charlie. <laughs> so, hey, man, go ahead. Give me a one-minute win, one-minute war. Tell us about your birthday. I seen you post on Facebook, and maybe everybody <laughs> on here didn't get an opportunity to take a look. Um, and if you don't have a one-minute win, one-minute war, just talk a little bit about, about your birthday and how you got to enjoy that with the family. Man, uh, birthday thing, man, hey, uh, I really enjoyed myself. Hey, it, uh, it was awesome. I uh, wasn't really, you know, as you get older, you don't expect a whole lot of anything from anyone. I don't. Um, maybe other people are different than me, of course, but I don't expect a whole lot. I think my wife's like, hey, do you want, what do you want? I was like, I got everything I need. I mean, I got a house, got my family, you know, got everything I need. I mean, there ain't nothing. If you just want to buy something, go right ahead. I mean, I'd rather not, you know, rather not. But then we, uh, so my wife wanted to go out and do something. So we went to, uh, down uh, in Beaumont, which is like maybe 20 minutes away from my house, 20, 30 minutes away. Went out there and uh, played some putt putt golf and went to a little arcade thing and played. And, you know, the putt putt golf was fun, except for the girls. They didn't, my two little younger daughters didn't like it as much. They got to about the 10th hole and they got tired. So there's 18 holes. So me and my wife were having a killer time. So she's like, hey, we'll go come back sometime and have a, you know, you know, together night type deal. Yeah. Just the two of us. Uh, you know, we haven't had one of those and shit, I couldn't even tell you how long. <laughs> oh, I really man. can't tell you, man. I mean, it's been at least probably five, six years. You got grandparents around? Yeah. Aunts, uncles? Yeah. You need to start finding somebody that you trust well, to babysit. You got to schedule a date night at least twice that, a month. That, that uh, well, the thing is, the two year olds just now starting to branch out and get more comfortable around. Of course, my wife right. breastfeeds. My wife breastfeeds. So, yeah, there ain't no formula going in around that baby. It's just no. pop the boob out. Now yeah. I try to tell I try to tell the baby to move over, but it just growls at me. <laughs> you tell the baby you get one, I get the other. We gonna have to I, work it. I, I try to, but the baby just slaps me every time I get close to it. I don't know who gonna slap you first, the wife or the baby, if you think you're gonna get on there and start feeding. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> if you think uh, you're gonna get on there and start feeding, and you definitely gonna get a slap or two. Oh yeah, man. So you know, we went and uh, you know went and done that thing for a little bit. Uh, you know, had fun uh, doing that. Went and played some arcade games. Super expensive as shit, but oh, you, you know the that. girls had fun. Uh, then after that, uh, went and went and sat down at eight. I got to get my special. Uh, gift that i wanted all all year round for a couple of years um every year i like to have it but crawfish so i had some crawfish and everybody was making fun of my comment on my facebook because i had posted said I, I had I had crawfish and then i brushed my teeth and then i had cheesecake but i did the brush of teeth in between because if you try to eat crawfish and then go ahead and it's, that's like, like a flavor saver in your mouth and then try to eat cheesecake so cheesecake plus crawfish just ain't gonna taste the best so some people read my comments like okay we're glad you finally brushed your teeth I'm like, son of a bitch. Should have known something coming out with that. <laughs> hey, no, that's not what I was saying. I was saying after yeah. my crawfish, I brush my teeth before my cheesecake. Yeah, man, you gotta separate the two, man. You get spicy ass fucking cheesecake. I ain't down with that. Yeah, I got a birthday coming up on Monday, and my wife asked me the same thing. What do I want? I'm like, I don't want nothing. Just take the whole family on a ruck with me. Y'all don't have to have a backpack. Let's just go on the walk. I don't. I don't, yeah, I don't really, I don't get too I, wrapped I, up in birthdays. It's another I, day. I, yeah, exactly. And actually, I tell my wife, it's like, what does every other guy ask for the damn birthday? What do you think I want? <laughs> for me, it's like, hell, I woke up this morning. That's a new day of birth. That's a new day I still got life. Now, I may not have came out the wound. I wasn't birthed that way, but I got life. So that's a that's a blessing in the birth for me because I was birthed to have some air in my lungs again. So I'm good with that. <laughs> I don't have to celebrate. Oh, I'm turning 45. And uh, yeah, it's just a number to me. I don't feel 45. So I'm still alive. It's just another good day. So my birthday is Monday. And uh, maybe when I turn 50, it'll be you know time to do something big. I don't know, but it's not really a big deal to me. But I'll be grateful for whatever my family do. So that's cool, too. 
yeah, no, and, that, and that's what I think uh, the most thing I enjoyed, though, is being around them because after we, you know, went out and had fun, had a bite to eat, and then we came back and we uh, kicked our couches together. We made a big giant, like, bed out of it because we got these large and depth couches, so we kind of shoved them together and make a big giant, like, giant bed, and then we just sat down and we watched a movie. Of course, they picked a movie and everything else, uh, mm-hmm. but it was awesome, man. Uh, uh, I love that, you know, the day was uh, definitely uh, – Super exceeded what I expected, of course. That's what's it's all, up. It's, it's, it's always fun with your family, though. That's what's up. Yeah, it is pretty good time with your family when you're getting to have fun. Ah, so it's been two weeks. A lot has been going on. And, um, of course, war. Olympics is over. Um, there's no telling what else that I missed that's been going on in the news that I'm not keeping up with. But, I mean, the most important thing that everybody's probably seeing is the war and everything. But it doesn't seem like it's going as good as uh, Russia may hope that it would go, especially if tanks is running out of gas in the middle of the road. That's probably not a good thing. But Somebody didn't do their PCMs in the morning, damn. Damn it, boy. Hey. The you think you're going you to fuck around with America and you can't even do PCMs, man? Come on. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> somebody Wait, at the S shop. What is it? The logistics is it the S three guy? But somebody gonna lose a job. <laughs> somebody hey, gonna... hey, their wives must be driving the tanks after they get off, then, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The wives are just oh, I meant to tell you, baby. I know you broke down, right? You out of gas? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did. I, did I, I love the recorded tank. <laughs> yeah, I did see one thing before we got on as I was researching, and then we get into our topic. Um, as far as uh, and a few, just a few things, you know, to kind of catch up with current events and what's going on. Uh, I did see something, and I don't see it right now, but I'll find it, that the top Russian general was uh, killed by the Ukrainian sniper. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I seen that. Yeah, yeah. They're like one of their top generals got knocked out already. Like, hey, bro, yeah. they ain't looking good for you. You start, they start going after your uh, your top dogs, and they knocking them off. Uh, you know, everybody else is gonna be like, okay, whoa, who, who's gonna be leading this? Who's next man up? Yeah. <laughs> the private, let's get up there. <laughs> what do yeah. we do? I, I, we're retreating, bro. I'm out of here. I don't get paid for enough of this. Yeah, I, I thought that was pretty interesting. I'm like, oh wow, how your, your top one of your top guys and got knocked out already? I, that might want, make you want to turn around, and go the other way. Well, I can tell you this much though: uh, what I've been impressive about, impressed about, you know, Ukraine though, is the people that are stepping up to the plate. You know, they're, they're you know, their president is out on the field. They got the the boxer that's out on the field. You got, you know pageant lady that won the pageant for their goddamn country is out Man, like listen. everybody everybody's fighting it's not just hey let's pick the scum up off the the bottom of our shoe and put it out there no they they said hey we all stand the ground right here we united here everybody who could walk was out there in line to get a weapon if they had one the civilians was building i mean making molotov cocktails in the middle of the road <laughs> yeah so- dude not only that, that they were saying, I, I remember watching it and seeing on there that they're talking about like, hey, the kids that were going to school the day prior was and, and it's such a gun restrict place that now the next day, the very next day, they were handed AKs and weapons to defend their country. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And the crazy thing is, the crazy thing is, too, is like the people out there don't know, of course, civilians or whatever else that don't pay attention to. United States map, whatever else, don't understand how close Russia is to the United States. Like it is a hop and a skip away from Alaska. Like they yeah. can, if, if shit goes down and they want to come toward America, it's yeah. going to start in Alaska. They're going to fuck up going there. But, you know, yeah. that's what they say. You're going to come down to the wrong part of the fucking, you know, United States. I mean, I'm sorry to say, I mean, I'm not afraid. They don't get me wrong. I hate for them to even come over here or even to get to that extent. But I know that, yeah, you, know, you got to fuck with the hill, hillbillies in the back with the hood people. Yeah, before you even get to the military, man, you're going you're going fucked up. Everybody's gonna be coming out with guns and shit like that. Yeah, I think be, I think in order for them to even think about attacking the United States, it'll have to be war, World War Three, and they would have to be teaming up with China in order to do that. Because even if you hit Alaska, Alaska is so large, and then you know you're gonna have to probably pretty much hit Canada. Because where's a what state does Alaska connect to? 
<laughs> so like you connect from Alaska to Canada, and then you can use Canada to come down through there. If I'm not mistaken, I'm gonna pull up a map and look at it. So yeah, um, I don't know but how that's gonna benefit you in the long run. And not only that, then you're gonna step into the the northern states where a lot of hunting is popular. So you're gonna step into states where they're used to the cold, that they're used to hunting in the areas like that. You're gonna step into some shit that you don't even want to step into. Yeah. So today, I know um, I have in our comments what we're talking about today. Images for, hold on one second. Um, The shortest distance airline between Alaska and California is 2,357 miles. So that's not by roadway either. Here we go. Right here is what I want to see. Oh, yeah, you hit, bro. Because Russia, you right, you right there by Alaska. But in order to hit uh, Northern America, you got to, once you hit Alaska, you got to come off into that Canada area. So we had so much worn old time before you even get here. It's going to be, it's going to be curtains for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's shit. Any place you come in and try to come into the United States. I mean, don't get wrong. I think the, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and say, if you, uh, like, I don't care what anybody else had to say, but the weakest link they can come into is California because they have the restrictedest gun laws in the world. So if you're going to come so, in anywhere, you better come into fucking California. It's so funny that you said that, too, because the first north, the first state that they would hit mainland is California. <laughs> yep. 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 California would be the first place. I'm well, sorry to say, like to my Cali's um, out there. No, let me and let me correct myself. It's like uh, California, and I'm not, you know, Wyoming or Mon Wyoming or Cal. Yeah, Wyoming, Montana. So what you stated earlier, you know, I've yeah. come across so many country, so so many farm, so much farm country, and so many individuals with weapons and things like that. You're gonna have to deal with. You're gonna have a problem on your hand. Yeah, because you, you know the uh, yeah, you know them backwoods people, man. They, they got more than just one. They they probably had the fifty cal stocked up inside their shit. Yeah, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be oh. good for them at all. Overindulging at Bucks from Jordan Perry. I don't know what Bucks is for overindulging, but uh, hopefully you had a good time and thank you for taking the time to join the free and relax your mind. Hey, that's that's one of my uh vendor friends at my workplace uh she she uh she was uh going to one of those local breweries uh ah. tonight okay yeah, she, that's what she, that's what she's doing over and she's a regular there they know her by her first name and stuff like that because so that kind of gets us into our topic that you know you're talking about tonight though that you brought up here uh you know with alcohol and stuff like that so She's overindulging at Bucks. That's what she's talking ah, about. Ah, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. And of all things that we could talk about on Speak Grunt, we decided I decided to pick this one. And the reason I, I, I this topic even came to me because recently, maybe about a week and a half, two weeks ago, somewhere in between the, the time we've been off, one of our uh, faithful followers sent in a message and asked me. Because we're often talking about, hey, send us topics. Let us know what you like us discuss, what you want to hear us talk about. And one of our faithful, faithful followers sent a message to me and asked me, could we talk a little bit about the effects that we believe alcohol can have on someone who suffers from PTSD and how that can make that, that, that sickness, that disease, that illness, that mental pressure that you're dealing with more debilitating and I was out on my walk yesterday, rucking. I figured I would just take it one further. And that's why I came up with the sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Because overindulging of two, uh, overindulgence in of any of those things could be detrimental to an individual who suffers from PTSD or any other mental illness. And the reason I say that, or the reason that I believe that. Because, of course, alcohol already, it lowers your inhibitions. Um, 
wrong music. It changes your, it alters your mind state. Now I'm not saying rock and roll is bad. I've been listening to Aerosmith um, for the last two and a half days. I've been listening to Dream On and uh, I Don't Want to Miss a Thing and a few other songs. Just came to my <laughs> mind and I've been rocking out to some Aerosmith. So oh, no. That's rock and roll, right? So, but yeah. if I was listening to maybe some, I don't know, I don't know, like some heavy metal or some, maybe some Ozzy Osbourne or something biting the heads off bats and pigeons or something crazy like that. And I'm already dealing with PTSD <laughs> and I'm drinking heavily, things of that nature. That might that might bother me. You know, that might make my recovery time. That might make dealing with my mental illness or the pressures from PTSD. And I'm just talking about PTSD in the sense of veterans who may have dealt with war and combat and things like that or just being in the army i'm not talking about ptsd for the civilians right now no disrespect to the civilians who suffer from ptsd from whatever reason that they do but this is for the veteran crew this is for the, the combat crew this is for the army crew that's been diagnosed with the ptsd and i know a lot of times we take the alcohol to ease some of those pains but once you've been diagnosed and especially if they got you on pills that might not help you man so I just wanted to kick that around a little bit and see what y'all thoughts were on that, what your thoughts were on that whiskey, Charlie, as far as, you know, overindulging in too much sex. And I ain't talking about too much sex with your wife if you're married. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about too much crazy, random, wild sex with people you don't know. And the reason I say that is because now you have all these different energies and different spirits and, you know, different attitudes jumping off on you as you jumping off on them. And you carrying somebody else's problems and things of that nature, drugs, you know, your overindulgence in drugs, whether it be prescription drugs that the VA or the military has prescribed to you, or maybe it's some drugs that you get recreational. Don't name marijuana because marijuana is a plant, okay? <laughs> so anyhow, what uh, what you got, Whiskey Charlie? I see you you looking. What do you think about that? <clears throat> Well, I guess, I guess you could say that the, whenever uh, I went to finally get, to, I think it was like a year ago, maybe, maybe a year and a couple months now, that uh, I seeked out, uh, you know, for V8 benefits and stuff like that. And, you know, I uh, went to, the, to this guy that was helping, helping me out to go out and seek out what I needed to, uh, to you know, research for on myself and what, mm -hmm. I, what, what affects me. Of course, me being me, thinking that nothing nothing is wrong or nothing that I'm doing it's just just the same shit different day you know like I always say you know the same shit different day you know that what I do is just regular but uh going into that and getting the guy uh to do some research for me and uh put him for a couple of things and going and talking to a psychiatrist and you know going to a couple of medical appointments and stuff like that I would have never imagined now, of course, it doesn't do me any better because I got it right here with me. Uh, but never would imagine that alcohol was even related to PTSD. Uh, and uh, of course, they rated me with uh, with with PTSD uh, mm -hmm. with with relatable to alcohol. Uh, so I didn't think anything. I, whenever the guy was putting down the stuff, he's like, "Oh well, you know, you, you could be potentially have this. You could potentially have this. Uh, this is relatable to this." I was like, "Okay, well, whatever." I mean just sign me up and let me go in just like I did with the military. It's like, okay, just sign me up. I don't give a fuck. Like I'll give a shot at it. And, you know, came back after talking to, you know, psychiatrist and ladies in the office and everything else. And then came back and they're, they're like, Hey, yeah, uh, we relate all your related you to PSD, PTSD with alcohol because I have more than so many drinks mm -hmm. in a day or so many drinks in a week. And I would have never imagined. I mean, I thought that was regular. I mean, who, you know, that's shit. I know a lot of people that probably put down more than me, but mm -hmm. at the same time, they related it to it because of the factor that, you know, they say, hey, it's, it's like a numbness feeling. And, and I do drink until I feel that numbness feeling. I mean, it just feels to me, it's a comfort feeling to me, the numbness to kind of like get away type thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to me, it, it it opens me up, I guess. And just I say it opens me up. I mean, I just gets me to the point to where I I don't care. I, I feel like I feel like the same way, but it's a different tolerance. My wife calls me a different person when, especially when I drink liquor, she calls me a whole different name uh, because I totally changed who I am. I, I don't see it. 
We but, never uh, do. Yeah, you, you'll never, of course, and you, you never see it until somebody starts speaking to you about it. And, you know, until she said something to me, and I think it's the biggest thing is uh, speaking about it, right? You know, our whole page is about speaking uh, and, and speaking with your loved one or speaking with somebody. I, I've slowed down a lot, a lot compared to what I used to do. Um, right. and I used to throw fucking down. Brother, and, I could I could just see that from where we are in the show. Cause yeah. we used to have bottles and be really doing our thing and be drinking. And I know, and I noticed the last couple of times, even when you drinking and I haven't had alcohol none this year, you know, yeah. like, <clears throat> and I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to pray but, for you. <laughs> <laughs> but even, you know, and I was going to say that just watching, you know, what your mic's hard lemonade and things like that, or your twisted teas from time to time. And it yeah. used to be, you know, the, the liquor, we used to have the bottles and shots. And then last year, we was all the way live with the alcohol. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no no doubt about that, man. And that's, that's the thing is, is uh, of course, when it comes to any of that stuff, uh, and any of those kind of like the sex, drug, and rock and roll, man, just know your limits. Uh, know your limits on what you need to take. And if, if it's something that you kind of like your body re- requires for you to do, mm-hmm. just know your limits and know where that point is, you know. Uh, I think uh, was it was it Kevin Hart? You gotta know your uh, pump number. Is oh, that what he yeah, said? That's, yeah, uh, Cat Williams. <laughs> Cat, Cat Williams. Williams. Yeah. yeah, you gotta know, you gotta yeah, know your know. pump number. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so but, you know you gotta know your limits, you guys. I mean, the biggest thing is is that you know if you start feeling that numbness, like to me, that's why I went to the Mike's Heart. I used to drink. You know, I, right now I could probably throw down a twelve pack of Bud Light and not feel a goddamn thing. But then I, I drink one to two of these mics hard and I get to where I want to be. And then I was like, okay, right now I, I know this is where I need to stop at. Cause if not, I'm going to start acting a fool. But I think it's also because my wife, my wife has been my biggest support. It's, it's having somebody there to support you. Like, Oh, whoa, let's cut you off. Right. Mm-hmm. It can't be on this. Sometimes you got to have that opposite person. Everybody said you got to have that same person at the same level mind as you, but you don't want the same level. Some, you want to have somebody that's going to also encourage you and try to get you better. Mm-hmm. And they're going to challenge you. And that's where it's going to be the most difficult with anybody is if you're getting challenged, that's where you're going to have. Sometimes you're going to have those difficult uh, conversations or difficult like fights, you know, and, and you've got to sit through it and really take you know, step to the side of yourself and really think to yourself, like, what am I doing? Like, did I really do that? Because there's, there's that times that where when I first met my wife and we were married, whatever else that, you know, I would still go out with my buddies and drink whatever else. And I black out. Like, why do you, why do you take yourself to that level? And, and I had to sit there and think, I'm like, why did I do that? Like, that was stupid. Like, no matter what, like, I still had a good time before I got to that level. But what yeah. made me go to that level was that encouragement or that, mm-hmm. that person, that, that uh, person on the left side, I mean, that little, little devil, Justin was like, Hey man, what's one more, man. Just, and just knowing you, you gotta know that pump number. That's what I'm saying, yeah. man. You gotta know that pump number. You gotta know what you can take. It's so Don't try funny. to act like a champ when you're not a champ. It's it's so funny that you said that because a lot of the things that you said, my wife has said the same things to me, you know, when I was drinking heavily like that, you know, you're a different person. And I, you know, I, I would say it, I was either two ways when I was drinking, I was either extra silly or extra angry. And depending yeah. on the situation and the person, place or thing, I could be angry just as fast as I could be silly or it can go back and forth, you know, and I've had those days. While I was drinking so much, not remembering how I got home, hanging around the wrong friends or and even I don't even want to blame the friends. Just feeling like, oh, I got this under control. I could have another. I could have another. And you just keep having another one until another has you. And you don't really know what to do after that. You know what I'm saying? So it's um the overindulgence of it. And, and if you're dealing with with mental triggers already, such as PTSD then alcohol is only going to make things worse. Sex with the wrong person. You mentioned, you know, support and things like that. I'm saying you can't go have sex or whatever, but you don't want to be going to have sex with everybody if you are already dealing with some mental trauma or some mental things and you don't actually take the time to deal with you because something they could say could trigger you and set you off. And you might react in a negative way that you didn't expect to. You know what I'm saying? a lot of those things we have to watch and why I put rock and roll in there. I mean, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. We've all heard that. But if you listen to the wrong type of music, it don't have to just be rock and roll. It could be rap. It could probably be country. You listen to the wrong type of music to feed that little soft voice, that little negative voice on your left shoulder, your right shoulder, whatever shoulder it is for you. If you listen to the wrong things, it could cause you to do some things you don't want to. And when you mentioned, you know, they, um, 
they linked your PTSD to alcohol. I, I, the, the thing that I would say, the reason they probably did that, because you have to think back. When you first got in the military, you were 18 years old. You know, you were still young. 18, 19, 20, barely when we went to Iraq, right? So if you think about that, technically, you wasn't supposed to drink in the military or whatever. And if you didn't drink as much then as you do now after coming from the war, they're like, well, what else do we... What what What's else relatable? connect this to? It has to be the things that he suffered from overseas. And you said it makes me feel numb. And I was the same way. It just makes me feel numb, makes me feel free sometimes. But then that freeness can turn into being too free when the alcohol overtook me. Yeah, no, it, it, it definitely does. And I, I think also, you know, what you're talking about those three topics, right, man, it's all. It's all about the crowd you're around, though, too. You know, mm -hmm. and, and the biggest thing is, you know, you're around a whole bunch of, you know, people that, uh, you know, and I ain't saying they're bad people because, hey, man, they, they may be living. Of course, if they're single, they live in a single life and you're around them and you thinking you're single. You know, it's about that crowd and who's going to encourage you. Again, I was talking about my wife being there to encourage me about my drinking, about my things like that. I've never been uh, much into uh, drugs, you know, uh, but uh you know, when, when it comes to drugs, I, I have family members that uh, and friends that were that's heavy on. And I don't consider. Look, I'm, I'm going to say this. I don't consider marijuana a drug. I'm talking about the other yeah. stuff outside the outside there that uh, just takes you to a whole different extent. Uh, but uh, I, I've had family members that's been on that type of stuff. And uh, and if you get took on, you, you can totally see the change in to them. And and, and and they're encouraging by, you know, I guess uh, certain events that happen during, mm -hmm. during while they're utilizing and people bring it up and like, Oh man, you did this and this, that, and the other. And they're laughing about whatever else it's like, man, like you need to stop and really think, do you really want to be pe somebody on, especially with the world, the way the world is now with the videos and stuff like, do you really want to be on a video online tripping fucking balls and winding up hurting yourself or hurting somebody else and putting yourself or anybody else in danger? Like, um, yeah. So, I mean, Man, you really got you got to think of it. you're not just hurting hurting yourself. I mean, hurting anybody else, but you're also hurting yourself. And the biggest the biggest priority you should have is yourself. You know, uh, now music wise, hey man, it's you know, you, whenever I listen to every genre, I just don't listen to one genre. I mean, I listen hip hop, rock, rap. I listen to bluegrass. I mean, I listen to everything. And yeah, every time I listen to something. Uh, you know, especially if I'm drinking, it changes my persona, who who I am, or how I'm acting, or whatever else. Uh, of course, uh, you know it, it shouldn't, but you know it, you get you get every different type of feel in your body, and, and you react to what you listen to. A lot oh, of times. absolutely, absolutely. You, know, you feel like a whole different person, like who you so, are. Uh, and, and then uh, imagine that mixing the two together. Like you said, I listen to all type of music too. So imagine listening to, you know, the, the 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 aggressive rap or the aggressive rock and roll or the aggressive whatever it is that you do for you. And you are drugged up or liquored up and you struggling with PTSD or you struggling with you struggling with PTSD, you struggling with anxiety, you nervous, you always on high alert and watching things going on around you. Or maybe if you relax, maybe you listen to some chill rock and roll music, maybe you listen to some. Aerosmith, I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep. <laughs> so now you're just I chilling. You, baby. Right. Now you're just chilling and you at the bar. You just sipping hey. a little bit. You not know. You hey, not listen to that song. You crying, bro. You don't care what's going on, right. bro. You got that song going on. You like, you know what? She left me. I'm out of here, bro. Like, and that's where it started shit getting serious. And, and yeah, for me, it's like nobody left me. It wasn't a sad time. It was just like, oh, I remember this song. This is this is a good song. But you could be in that same state and not an aggressive state. And then you can find yourself in that other position. You know, you can find yourself sex with somebody you don't know or you don't want to be with. Or for whatever particular reason, you just had one of those good nights at the bar. And now you got some other type of mental problem or mental stress that you got to deal with. Because maybe with this person, you don't want anything real. And they do. And now you have to figure out how to separate this person from your life and things of that nature. So. There's so many things that can that could go awry when we start to mix the two together. It's like them telling you, you know, you take your prescription drug and a pill bottle says it may cause drowsiness, so don't drive. 
Well, those two things not going to mix together. If you're taking prescription drugs for PTSD, you might not want to have no alcohol. You know what I'm saying? If you've been on a, a depressive state or depressive binge and you really just been going through, you might not want to have no alcohol. You might not want to have the wrong music in your life feeding you the wrong information because all that stuff is energy. And what we listen to feeds who we become. What we put in our body feeds who we are. And I clearly, I can 100% say today, I feel better without drinking than I do when I'm drinking. I don't, I'm not waking up with hangovers. I don't feel sick. My eyes and my skin don't look all bad and I look wore out. So it's like the benefits for that and I can think clearer. I don't have the mental fog. So the benefits for me not doing it is greater than the taste and the feeling of numbness of me doing it. So, oh, look, I, look I, I definitely, I feel you there uh, to a certain extent. Uh, I think the, to me is, uh, of course, a limiting yourself and know, knowing knowing your limits on it, right? Because mm -hmm. some people can't control themselves, you know? And again, it's about, about your audience and who's around you. Again, if you, if you get that support or somebody's willing to say, hey man, you're at that limit, you know, and find that stopping point to where, it, it it's it shouldn't it shouldn't hurt anybody to hey have a few drinks and enjoy yourself mm -hmm. you know and like they say even the doctor says with even with wine man a glass of wine can can uh, mm -hmm. help you out whatever else right I ain't saying that I'm you know don't get me wrong I do drink wine but outside that uh, when it comes to my drinks I like to limit myself to what I know I can handle and that's why I always if I stop by the gas station, I just grab me two, my mic's hard and that's it. I don't grab me go in there. I'm like, you know what? I think I can do 12 today. And you know, what? Mm -hmm. I can do, think I can do five or six of these today. Like, no, I, you know what? I know my, I know what my limit is. I know where I, where people can handle me and where I can handle myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you don't know where you can handle yourself with the limit of alcohol, then you may need that support or you may need somebody to help you out and uh, help you get that suggestion. Cause I, I mean, I, I made, made a fool of myself so many times drinking and it's it can be the same thing with drugs is you know you're just not knowing your limits again it's about knowing how much you can handle and still have the fun that you're having when you're overly doing it and you're winding up making a fool of yourself and i think that's one of the biggest things though is i've made a fool of myself one too many times and i was like hey, you know what i'm i want to better myself by i know I, I ain't gonna be able to totally quit but i'm gonna slow down to a point to where i can handle it and i still feel all right to uh still yeah. in, indulge and I think I think that comes with maturity as well. You know, we both just mentioned something about when we were younger, we didn't feel like it was a problem. We could just keep going forever. But we both also mentioned our wives, you know, seeing something that we didn't see. And we are fortunate to have a wife or have someone in our life that we love enough so much that we're willing to listen to. But what? if you think, go ahead. Well, it's not like just we love, but they love us just as much oh, as they see the better half of us, right? So now I'm just going to let my, the people, if, if you're watching this, whatever else, and you need that type of help, it's not just a wife, you guys. Hey, no. it can be a family member. Just listen to your family members. If they, if they, you know, peeking at, you know, they're probably not going to come out and just straight up tell you, hey, you drink too much. There's some people that's not going to be that right. honest. But they're like, hey, yo, bro, like, hey, you fat enough? Yeah. Like, they're going to give you that question, like, get you to question yourself, like, Oh, no, I didn't have enough. Or, you know, hey, you know, you're pissing yourself right now, bro. Yeah. But <laughs> and, and here's my thing. And the reason that I say the reason that I say that we love enough because we all have somebody in our lives. Well, most of us, I believe, have somebody in our lives that loves us more than we can love ourselves sometimes more than we can see you know, the love that we need to have for ourselves at times. And why I say we love them enough and you, it has to be bigger than you because if the wrong individual is telling you, if your homeboy like, man, knock it off, you had too many, you might not pay him as much attention as you're going to pay your wife or your long-term girlfriend. And yeah, a lot like, of times how do you, you are, know me? Yeah. yeah and a lot of times me? the same, you know I mean? a lot of times if you someone who suffers from, you know, maybe PTSD or maybe you someone who suffer with overindulging in your drinks, most of the time, if you drink a lot, you're not hanging out with people who don't drink. So yep. if you're not hanging out with people who don't drink, you hanging out with the people that drink just as much as you or more than you, they're not uh -huh. looking to tell you things that's going to benefit you. So you don't love them like you love your wife. I think I've, I know I've talked to actually one of my uh, 
buddies, one of the guys that I work with, who I ruck with, who I go do some things with, and he talked about not drinking anymore because I believe he said his wife, you know, gave him that ultimatum. You either stop drinking or I'm done. I'm gone. And a lot of times if your buddy tell you, hey, man, you keep drinking, I'm not your friend. So what? There's more people to drink with me. But your wife, that's a totally different thing. Or maybe you see something in your kids that might help you change. So it really has to be, although other people love us dearly, it really has to be somebody you probably truly love too, who you don't want to be singing Aerosmith because I miss you. You don't want to be singing that song because you didn't listen to them attempting to love on you and attempting to help you because you want to keep doing what you was doing. And then how can you really expect to get better when you struggling with PTSD and depression and things like that, when you are constantly drinking above where you need to be, how do you expect to get better when we listening to the sad songs or the songs that puts us in the fits of rage? Or how do I get better if I'm out at the bar drinking every night and I can go home with some different chick every night? Again, I'm taking all of somebody else's energy and spirits within to my life that gives me no time to see my life right, to even see my life clearly. I don't think alcohol is a problem if it's what an individual chooses to do. Like you said, you shouldn't overindulge. I used to overindulge, and I ain't talking about in the last four or five years. I'm talking about 10, 10, you know, seven to 10 years plus when I was overindulging. And in the last four or five years, I've been good. I knew my limit. I wasn't going above my limit, and I was okay with that. But when you in that position and you know you knocking out a 12 pack and you like, oh, I'm good. I could drink some more. Bro, that might be a problem. Yeah. You might already yeah. be at problem stage. If you're knocking down 12 and you still going, you might be at problem stage because you put your body in a place to where it this 12 beers is normal. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, and, and I, oh. I say, look, like that, that's one of the things that I also, you know, I noticed when I first got back from overseas, man, I, I went up. First back up, got back from overseas, you know, going back to work, man, I, I can I can probably put down 18 pack in a day and not feel a thing. Whew. 18. 18. Doesn't matter. Bud, Bud Weiser. I mean, Bud Light just tastes like water the whole time. But, yeah. you know, I can, you know, do, do, the, do the heavy drinking and, and then go out on the weekend. And then also, what I, I can tell you what also, if you take a step back and you know, look at your money and look at where your money's going, I mean, it tell you, I'm telling you what, it, it surprised you. Because I, uh, I was, uh, of course, when my wife was telling me about all this stuff, I'm like, oh, no, it's, it's not hurting us. We, I'm good. It's that and the other. And, of course, I was, you know, out buying 12 and 18 packs, you know, every other day, whatever else. And uh, getting to a point to where it's like, of course, health-wise, it was overbloating me. I was gaining weight and this, that, and the other. And then I was like, you know what? Let me tr uh, uh, let, let me try to see, like, what uh, – what can really help me here and get me still to where I want to be at and what, what my limit is. And that's why I've switched over to the Mike's hard lemonade is because mm -hmm. of, or Mike's harder lemonade is because it still gets me to the point where I, uh, I feel good and how, I, you know, how everything, how everything I feel, everything mm -hmm. else where I want to be at, where I want to be at, but it costs me $6 compared to going out and spending 15 to 20 bucks and barely get me where I want to. And then, yeah. like, like you said, waking up feeling like shit. Yeah. And everything else, right? And just, of course, is knowing your limits and knowing what you need to, you know, r knowing what you really need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, I, and and my big thing though too is my question is people out there is also with the the drug piece, man. I uh, I mean, I like, again, I had a lot of family members to get into, you know, some heavy drugs, and I've seen them get off and get clean for a while, and then get back into it. Man, I I I, I can only uh, pray for you guys out there that's really struggling with those that that situation. I mean. To me, I, I've I've quit alcohol before, and and you know I've done well with it. Uh, did I struggle? Yeah, I struggle. Huh. I mean, I, I kind of rely on alcohol at times to make me feel good and make me get to the point to where you know I'm open up or I'm doing whatever I, I want to do. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like you know, drug wise, uh, it's probably it's probably it's more addictive than alcohol. I can say. Yeah, because if, if I really if I really tried and, and I've set my mind to it, I know I can definitely quit uh, alcohol. But again, I'm, I, I limit myself. You know, I'm, you know, you do baby steps, everything, mm -hmm. especially if you're addicted to something and you got to do baby steps. You got to step your steps back in. 
there's no way, especially if you don't got somebody in your life or somebody that's in your life telling you saying, Hey, you know, you need to, you know, you need to slow down you need to take a step back. Uh, you know, you, you never can go to somebody and say, Hey, you need to quit bone dry. There's no way in hell that's possible. I, I know even with drugs, that's really crazy thinking, you know, taking a step back. Uh, I know that, you know, you're, you're going to go through, you know, phases where it's not enough, but you really got to know your limit. And then also tell yourself like, Hey, what, what is, what is it that you really want to do with your life? I mean, what do you really want to do? You want to be stuck in the path. Cause to me, like, then this is my opinion. This is just me thinking, you know, when I, when I see people that utilize and heavy in drugs and getting, again, I don't consider marijuana a drug. I consider the other things that people utilize, you know, math and getting into all that stuff. I consider that drug because to me, it's like, what, what extent, I guess, in your mind that says, Hey, I'm doing okay. Cause literally I ask myself every day when I wake up or whatever I'm doing in my life, like, what can I do to better myself? Like I, I'm, I'm always thinking about me. Yes. I think about my family. I'm, a, I'm definitely prioritizing, but I'm going to say, what can Absolutely. I do to better myself? What can I do to better myself to better my family? Cause you gotta, mm -hmm. especially if you're, if, if you're a breadwinner for your family, man, you gotta take care of you. You really do. You gotta take care of you to take care of them and, yep. and showing them that. Cause one of my biggest dreams always in my life was always to take care, uh, be able to work and be able to afford to where my wife can stay home and take care of my kids. And right now I've, I've achieved that and I want to keep that goal going, be able to let my wife take care of kids and raise our kids. And if something goes to go down that she, that she, she can take care of them and I can still focus in on what I need to focus on. Mm -hmm. So again, at that point to me, I, I really, I, with, with drugs, I mean, it's gotta be, man, it's, it's crazy to, for, to think that people would, to accept that path to me, to accept the path to where it's like, Hey, this is okay. I, I feel like I'm going good this way. Like to me, I, I'm mind boggling, but I understand that it's a whole different thing. That's why I know that alcohol is not that extent compared to drugs because drugs is just like, if you're on drugs, that's the only thing that matters. Like, and, it, and I guess it depends on what the drug is because again, I, I'm no different than you, man. I have some family members who, 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 who has done, and some are still doing some heavy drugs and some heavy drinking. And I, and I may have a family member or two who, if they probably stop drinking now, they might die. Wow. To, to be yeah. honest with you, because, you know, sometimes people drink so much when you stop drinking and you start going, your body start going through detox. You got the shakes and you're sweating and you have all type of things going on because your body has become chemically dependent upon that. So I don't want to make it like, you know, one is worse than the other. And it probably is medically, but overindulgence or too much of either yeah. one of those, whether it be alcohol, whether it be the uh, street drugs. I ain't talking about marijuana. That's a plant, not a drug. OK, that's totally yeah. different thing. It's a plant. Hey, but God put that plant even, on there for a reason. If, and here's the thing. Even if. I was I was smoking weed. I was smoking weed on a regular basis at one point in time in my life. And then I realized even for me, okay, I need to take a break. Not because I feel like weed is taking over my life, but at the same time, I feel like weed is taking over my life. Like I wake up like, ooh, I'm about to go on a ruck. You know, a year or two yeah. ago, I'm about to go on a ruck. Before I go yeah. on my ruck, I smoke and I'm like, I clear my mind. I talk to Jesus. And then it went from my smoke on the weekends or I smoke when I'm done with all my work and I'm relaxing or I smoke cause I'm in pain for my arthritis to where it's like, Oh, I'm going to smoke. Why? Cause I got it. Cause it's there. Sort of like yeah. drinking up oh, seven o'clock in the morning. I open the refrigerator. I don't want no water, but I see, <laughs> you know, that drink sitting there. <laughs> I go for it. So it's yeah. like you, when you, when I found myself and this may not be for anybody else, when I found myself doing those sort of things, I was like, okay, this is too much for me. Yeah, I need a look, break. I, I, need, so, I need to step back because this thing has more control over my life than I do. And if I'm looking to shake PTSD because I was diagnosed with that too, like if I'm looking to beat this thing, how can I continue to add this thing that's not helping? So it's like you have to, like you said earlier, you have to do it in moderation and you have to learn how to regulate that thing. But I, what yeah. I believe you're saying is like, 
if you using something that's harder than marijuana, you on heroin, you on Oxycontin, Vicodin, that stuff that your body started to crave and you get chemically addicted to, oh, that could be detrimental for you. Yeah. That really could be detrimental for you. And it's all about like, again, like I said before, like, see, I, I used to, I used to be able to, again, when I got back from overseas, I could wake up at, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, start throwing down again. Like, Hey, that's also because I was hanging out with my battles and everything else. Mm -hmm. Like, Hey, it was okay. It's a cool deal. And then my life, my wife started coming to me and it's like, Hey, why starting so early? Cause you know, you're going to get drunk and pass out by three o'clock. Mm -hmm. hold, hold off. You know? And, and the thing is, is I also learned, from watching other individuals that started drinking way early in the morning and I asked and started noticing to them like being, and of course me not drinking at the time, watching them slow down and start acting fools by the time mm -hmm. it's one o'clock. I'm like, Dude, yeah. it's only one o'clock. You, you ready to go to sleep? You're, mm -hmm. you're already tripping over your own feet and shit like that. So that's also why I try to limit myself to, Hey, you know what? I'm going to wait until this certain time. Mm -hmm. So one of, try, one of the things I try to do now is before I used to start drinking right at 1159. 12 o'clock. <laughs> hey, it's lunchtime. I can do this, right? right. Let, me, let me go ahead and do this. Now it's the point is where it's like, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until a certain time. So I try to wait until like four, five mm -hmm. o'clock in the afternoon. Hey, let, let me limit myself because I know my old ass, and I'm not even that old, but I know I'm going to be in bed by eight. So three hours worth of drinking, and I drink maybe two an hour. So that's a six pack. Mm -hmm. You know, it's again, again about regulating when you're going to do stuff. Now, again, I cannot speak for the people out there that's suffering from that uh, overindulging on the drug piece. I can't speak for you on that. I don't know where that limit is that you need mm -hmm. to stop at. Yeah. I'm going to let you know this much that if, if you're going to the point to where you're having to, I, I would say watch your bank account and watch what you're having to do to give up, to give up to meet. If you're having to – look, I knew, I knew somebody in my life that would steal from their own family – to support their drug habit that would go out and do other things to support their drug habits, you know, and I've seen people get hurt trying to support the drug thing. If you're at the point to where you're having to do any of those things, Hey, you really need to seek help. And I'm, I'm going to let y'all know to my battles out there that are right now are suffering from anything like that, or any friends that are watching this, you have help out there. There's help out there. Reach out. Uh, if you're not sure where to go to, Reach out to me or Big Sarge. I promise you we'll, we'll help you find that support that you need. And we're going to get out there and get you that support. Uh, now, again, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Hey, the music, you think you guys, hey, you guys, it's all about what you're taking in is what's going to influence you, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about fr friends influencing people. That music will influence you to a whole different level. Uh, I'm going to let you know what when I drink, depending on how much I drink, first of all, know your limits. But also after, after that, then listening to the uh, listening to music also intensifies things, right? Mm -hmm. If you're listening about busting heads and shit like that, guess what? And you're drunk. That's first thing you're gonna react to. That's what you want to do, right? Yeah. The people, a lot of people don't know, but ninety percent of the people out there are emotional drunks. Yeah. They're gonna react to the music that they're gonna be listening to, right? Oh, absolutely. If, if you're pissed off, you're gonna want to fight. Yeah. If it's happy music, you're out there dancing, having a good time. But if it's some type of sad music and, and, and it's depressing and it's about a loved one, you're going to react to that way in two different ways. You're going to react in uh, either crying and then there's some people that's going to react to it where they're going to take it emotional to where the sad part is they're going to end up doing something that they don't want to and either taking their life or just being really stupid by approaching situations in the wrong uh, approaching situation in the wrong way. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember my days of getting drunk and having fun. I'd be dancing the night away. And then no. I find myself laying on the ground on some pissy bathroom floor because I just need to cool off for a bit. <laughs> Bro, you just don't even... Hey, look, Big Sarge, I remember leaving the clubs in Houston at like 2 o'clock in the morning. I had to be at work at 5 and being and going to work at 5 and then having to uh, go into the bathroom and take a quick nap in the bathroom at Home Depot. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's pretty fucking horrible. I'm just gonna let you know if you don't know, that's pretty fucking horrible because the way that people treat the fucking Home Depot bathroom is like probably worse than they treat an airport fucking bathroom. I mean, I've seen where shit spreads up up, up above the fucking stalls and shit like that. I was like, how in the fuck? Where were you aiming that shit at? Hey, funny thing here, Big Sarge. I'm gonna tell you something funny here. Talking about bathrooms at Home Depot, bro. Tell me why I walked in the bathroom the other day and some guy was on an interview. Taking a shit 
<laughs> answering questions. <laughs> No lie, I walked in. I hear she. This dude has this lady on speakerphone, <laughs> and he's answering questions to an interview. Why toilets are flushing in the background? Like what the? <laughs> oh yeah, I can do that. <laughs> like, what, the, I, what to me is like, what's that? like? Are you like, hey, you want to hear something else? Trippy out, man. Interviewing people and then. Telling them that they had the drug test and not knowing that they had a drug test when they had to, and as soon as you go to go get the drug test, you come back out there to get the drug test and they gone. <laughs> like we be looking at them straight, look at straight at them and say, "Hey, can you drug test? Yeah, I got a drug test. All right, I'm gonna go get it real quick. Come back, they gone." <laughs> what the fuck? Like, were you sure? Like. They said they want you to waste your money. They already knew. They just they didn't think that you was, when you said can you drug test, they wasn't expecting you to walk right out the room and come back ready to go. You know, most of the time when people say you got to do a drug wow. test, you're like, oh, okay, cool. They're gonna send you to Concentra or somewhere like that. You know, you got time, so you think. But when they walk out the room, you're like, oh man, it's time to exit stage left. I, I got yeah. go. I know I ain't gonna pass this. Yeah. No, and that, 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 uh, the funny thing is, there's a whole lot of people unaware about the different types of drug tests, right? Pest test, you got a mouth swab, you got hair follicle, you got so many different types of things, especially because most of them are resorted toward marijuana. Yeah. Again, I don't consider that a drug. That's my opinion. I'm a right, I have the right to that because, uh, yeah, that, that's but my you opinion. Probably, you got a right to that. I'm with, yeah, right. So outside that, you know, my, my opinion on that is like they don't know. They don't know what a, ca- a cotton swab to the mouth, mm-hmm. right? They don't know how long that takes mm-hmm. or how, how far it picks up. Man, I, I've been interviewing – I've interviewed people where they're like, hey, man. Like, they're straight up honest with me. I was like, you know what? I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not even going to worry about drug testing you, but uh, I can't hire you here. Uh, but uh, appreciate you for being honest. If you ever come back clean, let me know, and I'll re-interview you. But, hey. You know, I appreciate you for being honest. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, you know, man. And again, just going back to the thing, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. When you know, you know. When you overindulge in too much of one, you probably need to take a step back from that. You probably need to reach out and get some help. And don't reach out to your friends who's drinking with you all the time because they're going to tell you just tripping you crazy. Here, have a drink. We'll be good. You need to reach out to some people who truly love you and want to see you do better because they care about you, not because they're trying to control you. And that's the big thing. Whiskey Charlie said it. Start looking at your life and what's going on around you. Maybe your money is good. Maybe you got enough money to where it ain't hurting you like that. But start looking at your appearance. Start looking at your skin. Start looking at how your hair is. Like All those things are affected by overindulging in too much of something. All those things are are affected by overindulging in too much of something. So when you start to take a step back and you look at you and you're not comfortable with who you are or where you at, or maybe you are comfortable, but the half a dozen... <clears throat> Hold on one second. Oh, yeah. Hey, what's going on, man? Let me, let me call you right back in like five minutes when I finish up this show. What? You going to finish me off that quick? Uh, you know, I you don't know, but... last longer than five minutes, baby girl. Hey, well, you know, uh, you got to know your pump count. <laughs> you know yeah, your pump count. Hey, it is, man. Well, thirds, I'm telling you, man, that pump count but, matters. You know, so when you, when the only reason I said five minutes because I like to keep it I keep it real fair for the people because I'm looking at the clock too, and I'm hey. almost. My hour, but you know how it goes. You gotta be fair to your friend on the phone because it could be six minutes and he's expecting it in five. Hey, well, well, things happen. Hey, okay. Look, underestimate over, you know, over, over, under, under, uh, under promise, over deliver. Bam, right there. <laughs> you gotta keep it that way, man. Hey, look, I'm gonna be like 10 minutes, and then when you call me six, I'm like, oh, damn, that was fast. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I and no, uh, uh, that's my that's my buddy. And sometimes I tell people, hey, I'm gonna call you back in five or ten minutes. You call them in three minutes. They don't answer yeah. the phone. You call them in seven minutes. Then you'll hear them from two days later. So we'll see <laughs> what happens. True. We'll that see what true. happens when I make the call back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Um, That's true. And, and normally I wouldn't answer, but I answered for the fact that, oh, okay, usually if I call them, they don't answer. So it's kind of like a hit and miss game. So I figured let me answer real quick and say, hey, I'll call you right back to let them know I'm going to call. So hopefully they'll pick up. But anyhow, if they don't, I'll work through that too. Um, anyhow, so going back to the sex, drugs, and rock and roll and, and attempting it, and, and we're talking about dealing with those things I was I brought this to the light based on a question that somebody asked me, a topic that they gave me about talking about the effects of alcohol and how it could affect your PTSD. And all three of these things of PTSD is something that you struggle with or you suffer with. This can only make matters worse. I was looking up some stuff and I was looking up, OK, the effects of alcohol on people with PTSD. It's like alcohol can make PTSD symptoms worse. Using too much alcohol makes it harder to cope with stress and your trauma memories. Alcohol use, alcohol use and intoxication can increase some PTSD symptoms. Symptoms that can get worse are feeling numb or having no emotions. So if you feeling numb and you don't have no emotions, you don't have no problem probably knocking somebody out at the time you don't need to knock somebody out. You don't have no problem having sex at the time. You probably don't need to be having sex with somebody. You don't have no problem sitting in a car for maybe three, four hours listening to a song that has you crying. Like when I was going through in 06, 07, when, um, say we lost our first soldiers in Iraq and things like that. For some strange reason, the songs that I would play or the thing that I heard the first time we lost somebody was Toby Keith, American Soldier. And that song would always have me crying. You know, the, the American Soldier and the uh, Proud of This Country, the Red, White, and Blue. And that went on for years. Like, if I had a point in time where I was thinking about one of the guys we lost or somebody that was close to me, I play that song to to release. I know it's going to take me more in a depressive state, in a sad state. So you add that with too much alcohol. Now you're sitting in the car for three hours boohooing about some stuff you can't change. And you might be putting yourself in a position to where it's more negatively affecting your family. And why I say that is because you're such in a depressive state that you don't want to get up and go to work. You don't want to get up and take care of the house. You don't want to get up and take care of yourself. And now because you've allowed this thing <clears throat> to get the best of you, it becomes a bigger thing than it would it need to be. And that's why I think it's important for us to reach out to individuals who can help us get through. Yeah, no, that's definitely sure. And uh, there's this little thing. Uh, I, look, I always follow, I guess, uh, pages on my Facebook about like yeah. positive yeah. quotes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And there's one on here that kind of uh, kind of, reaches out there and it says, I hope you will walk on this journey knowing that you, you belong. I hope you even, even if things sometimes do not go your way, you will not stop trying. You will not give up on yourself and on your thought, uh, on your toughest days. I hope you will keep reminding yourself of this. You are loved and you are worth it. Even when it doesn't feel that, that way. Facts. Right. So, I mean, it, mm -hmm. I, I would uh, go ahead and, uh, uh, pronounce the dude's name, but, uh, Whoever mentioned that, it's got a hard name. It's definitely an America. Uh, I'm just going to D H I M A N. So something, man. Yeah. Yeah. I whatever your name is, that dude, Damon, Damon, or whatever the hell his name is, I'm going to let you know. Legit, good words. Don't know who you are, but respect. That's And, that's and it's the reason back in the day why, and it's still to this day, why they call alcohol spirits because it changes your spirit. It changes your outlook on things. Yeah. And again, we already know you probably don't want to cross drugs and you definitely shouldn't be crossing white and brown alcohol, even though I used to do that too, you know, like on a regular basis. It, I feel like it don't bother me. But when you think about that, some of the prescription drugs that they are prescribing for you for your PTSD to deal with your, your mental depression and your anxiety and things like that, a lot of those things say do not mix with alcohol because they know it's only going to make your symptoms worse and it makes yep. it harder for you to get out of the situation that you're already in. So that's why we say this to you, friend. It's yep. not about you know telling you you can't drink, you can't smoke, you can't have sex. No, you can do what you want to do, but know what you are doing to you 
and know what you're doing to the people around you who loves you because it has a great effect on them too. That's why we have to regulate ourselves to, um, you know, watch what we do, especially if you truly want to get better and get back to or get to living a happy, healthier, uh, more productive lifestyle for you. There's just some things you're not going to be able to do. I don't care who you are. <clears throat> You're not going to be able to drink every day, all day, and function at 100% capacity like the individual who not drinking. It, it don't yeah, happen no, like that. Because you, your body, and that, that goes with, again, the drugs and the alcohol, you know, y your your limit increases every fucking time you, you, you do that mm -hmm. and, and on a consistent base, right? Again, that's why I've taken myself from, hey, waking up at 8 o'clock in the morning and start drinking at 10 or whatever else. I limit myself to, you know, to minimize the amount that I drink, not only the amount of drink, but what, what I actually do throughout the day or what I can do. That's why I also, y'all watch my page and Big Sarge is like, oh, you don't have any projects going on. It's because also, uh, other than being colder outside of everything else, I kind of hibernate with the fucking bears. Uh, but outside that, I just kind of limit myself, uh, even with the alcohol drinking. Again, it's like, hey, you know what? I there's no need for this at this point right now. I mean, I, I usually like when I was starting my projects, I usually like try to drink, but what I have done now is like, so when I wake up, I'm a five, six o'clock more. I'm ready to go. Let me get my coffee in. Let me work until, you know, two, three o'clock. And I, Hey, you know what? I'll crack, I'll go buy me, uh, buy me a, a six pack or whatever else, or my drinks that I drink and drink it. And then I'll stop right there. But of course it's the support that I have is saying, Hey, Justin, like, Hey, it's kind of early. Yeah, you know, and and in my mind, I'm like, it's never too early to drink. But at the same time, I'm like, you know what, I will be asleep by six, and I need to have mm -hmm. this project done by this time. So of course, mm -hmm. knowing what, you, what what you're trying to do and what you're trying, because I again, I think one of the biggest things that stood out to me though is when I'm drinking, it's like, hey Justin, you know, we got people over hanging out. If you start drinking now, you're gonna be passed out, and they're gonna be making fun of you the whole time, or hey, they're gonna be fucking with you, and you know, you don't you don't like that shit, so. At that time, I'm like, you know what, you know what, instead of drinking, you know, one every ten, uh, two every ten minutes, I'm gonna limit myself to, hey, one every like thirty or the thirty minutes to, hey, only drink like two at, at an hour, you know, and limit myself and control it. And even, you know, maybe I know I've been that guy before. I know I've been that guy, and I know I've seen that guy, uh, you know, in somebody else. You never want to be the individual that's just too drunk. Because you only yeah. look like an ass, especially mm. if you at somebody else's house or you a house guest. How dare you invite me to your house and then you so shitty drunk that we can't even, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> connect with one another. Like, why, why bro, am I bro. here, bro? Just to, just to, yeah. just to, watch, just to watch you. watch you get drunk and pass <laughs> out at 6 o'clock. <laughs> pass out and drunk at 6 o'clock or are you acting a fool that you can't even walk straight? Absolutely. Or are you sitting there? You're sitting there just nodding, mm -hmm. trying to keep yourself. And that's the same thing with drugs. You know, yeah. why do I want to come hang out with you if, you, if you're going to sit there and be drooling? Mm -hmm. You're sitting there drooling on yourself at one o'clock in the afternoon. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, mm -hmm. know your limits, whatever else. But then uh, again, like another one of that same dude's quotes also kind of stuck out to me on here. It says, don't ever forget where you were when you started. Ooh. You, could you could have given up and taken the easy path. Right. You you have you could have allowed your past to define your future, but you did not. You believed in the impossible. You chose to move forward despite all odds. Yes, you did not get get it right all the time, but you still gave your best to life every single time. Be grateful that uh, be grateful of that. Uh, say be grateful of that. Uh, be grateful for that and be grateful for making it this far for trusting yourself in, in your journey. More than that, uh, more than what was difficult. So I mean, I mean, right there, just goes to speak, man. Don't don't ever give up on yourself. You're going to go through difficult situations, but right. it's going to happen, no matter what, you guys. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's going to happen, guarantee yeah. you. I've Absolutely. been through mine. Big Sarge has been through his. You know, and and you know what? Uh, the only thing you can do is just keep your head up. And guess what? Accept accept the fact of it. What is that? Learn from that fact and keep pushing yourself because. Your best ability, your best ability is what you, 
what you what you are willing to pretty much accept what your best ability is. If you're accepting that, hey, you, you know what, I am gonna be shit, but I'm gonna keep keep doing this. It's all I can do. It's the best I can do. And that's you're accepting the fact. That's one thing I always tell myself. I, I'm I, I'm much better. If you don't leave your work asking what could you have done better, and that's what I try to tell some of the people. If you don't ask what you can do better for yourself and what you could have done better for the day. And you say, oh, yeah, I did everything I could. There's always more that you can do. The sad part, there's always more you can do. But if you're willing to step back and maybe you have a 15-minute drive home and just think, okay, I could have done this better. I could have done it this way. If you're not if you're not thinking that way then and you're just accepting the minimum, then you're not challenging yourself. If you're not challenging yourself, you're not going to further yourself. You always got to challenge yourself to further yourself. I don't, I don't accept mediocre. I don't accept you know just bare minimum. I'm always going to challenge myself. Uh, I take criticism to the uh, to the most because I, not that I'm you know I I uh, not that I, you know the criticism affects me that much, but I, I also want to say that I can do better. Like okay, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna take a criticism. You know what? You you say I can do better. I'm gonna do twice as twice as good. I'm gonna show you how much more better I can do. And if you, if you're just accepting what you can do at the bare minimum, that's not challenging yourself. I'm only going to accept what I can do at the max of what I can do. Absolutely. That's good right there. That's good. If you just, if you just doing the, the bare minimum, you just average. And there's so many average people running around doing average things and want to live an extraordinary life, but you don't live an extraordinary life doing average things, you know, mm-hmm. um, deciding or telling yourself what you need to do better when you need to do better and how to get better. Again, those are the things that grow you. Like we couldn't sit here and have this conversation about sex, drugs and rock and roll and alcohol and these other things if it wasn't something that we've experienced in some shape, form or fashion. Overindulging in too much of one of these things at the wrong time could cause you to lose your mind. And especially if you're dealing with something like PTSD. And I know it coming home from my both all my come all my deployment. I know I was drinking a lot heavier than I was before I went to. And those things can find you in a whole bunch of trouble. So listen to me, grunts and my grunt families. <clears throat> if you need help, don't be afraid to reach out to me or reach out to Whiskey Charlie. I may not have an answer for you at that time, but I'm going to do everything in my power to help get you in the right direction or someone who can help you ease the pain in your mind. Because we're not psychologists. We're not psychiatrists. We're not doctors. We're not lawyers. So We are individuals who've served. We are individuals who's probably had one too many drinks, listened to the wrong music at the wrong time, probably sexing with somebody who you wanted to forget out of your mind. Man love Thursdays, as Whiskey Charlie say. But (laughs) we are also individuals who are able to make it through, too, by holding ourselves accountable. And that's something else that Whiskey Charlie said. You got to hold yourself accountable and you got to ask yourself these those tough questions. Did I do everything that I could do today? How did I get better today? How did I help someone else get better today? And if you cannot answer those questions honestly and realistically to make a change in your life, to make your life better, then you need to, you know, recalibrate. You need to recalibrate your compass and you need to check the direction you're looking to go in. And don't get mad at the VA or your doctor or anybody else when you say this stuff ain't working if you're not doing the things that they give you to work on. You can't say you ain't drinking no more and you taking your pills, but you still drinking and then you mad saying it ain't working. That's like, that's that's not right. So you have to figure out that thing that's getting the best of you. And then you need to create a plan and talk about what you want to do and how you're going to use that plan to help you be able to get through so you can get to the best version of you. Uh, that's what's up, Big Sarge. Hey, man, that's it. That's all I got. It wasn't five minutes. It was more like 10, but I'm going to have to go ahead and get ready to end because it's almost 10 and I like to be in the bed, but that's not going to happen. But I know when that alarm clock go off at 430 in the morning, I'm not going to want to get up and I'm going to have to tell myself, get to the rock because that's what's going to help me get out of my bed, throw on my shoes and my socks, put that ruck on my back and go attack. It's time to go do my rucking. Because my yeah. kid told me I got a dad by going on. He said I'm getting a little chubby. So hey, I'm like, oh, I'm happy, no. I'm happy with this thing right here. I'm just going to <laughs> So is my wife. She says I look hot. So I'm, I'm going to go down, man. It don't matter. 
Yeah, there you go. That's what's yeah. up. I just I'll limit my dad bod. How about that? I'm gonna there limit you go. it. There you go. I'm gonna <laughs> limit my dad bod. Okay. If I, I would say if I can't stop seeing uh, if I if I can't see my pecker, then I would uh, stop. Oh. But uh, I couldn't see it from the get go. So. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, don't look like you need to change yeah. anything here. Well, yeah, gotta, still the same. Still the same. Pump count is. <laughs> <laughs> Going to wind up with a couple more of those little guys around in here yelling at me. Yeah. But, uh, hey, look, hey, Big Sarge, uh, biggest thing, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave off with, again, I know I already uh, cited two little things from this thing uh, oh, that I was seeing on my Facebook. You're good. But, uh, well, I want to leave off here, you guys, uh, man, just, uh, Make sure that uh, it's, uh, you, you don't listen to people. Take care of yourself. Do do you, man. Uh, and as the biggest person, the biggest person that makes an impact in your life is you. Uh, and one of the little things on here that I, I seen today that kind of like stood out to me and made a connection is there's always a message in a way a person treats you. Mm-hmm. Right. Just listen. Right. Mm-hmm. So you guys, again, we were talking about our significant others giving us uh, that message of, hey, man, just, you know, if you listen to them, you, or it doesn't have to be a loved one. It, I mean, as a loved one, as a, a wife, it could be your kid that it maybe you're single and with a, with a baby or a kid or a kid that's like, hey, dad, you know, you're not, you know, hey, you okay, dad? This that, and the other, or maybe it's a family member checking in on you, whatever else. Uh, but it's also, you know, there's always a message in a way a person treats you. Really, just take a take a time and think about that, man. Uh, I mean, it really just took out took out because. They're going to treat you. I mean, they're going to treat you how they want to treat you. And depending on what message that is, is really how you should think and say, okay, do they really respect me? Yeah. Do they really respect the way, you know, how you may be showing the at most respect, most love to other individuals, but depending on how they reply back to you or how they respond back to you, really just take that in like, okay, do they, do they trust me or do they really, you know, really care for me to, you know, do what I ask or, you know, and stuff like that, you know? So it's really a big thing. You, you got to take into a mindset is man. Hey, just listen to the responses. If they respect you, if they don't respect you guys. They ain't gonna listen to you. If they ain't listening to you, you ain't gonna get nothing out of them. So make sure, you know, just listen to how they respond back. You know, it's all about listening. And, you know, and one of the biggest topics in relationships is about talking about listening, right? Listening to each other. Just listen. Just listen to what they got to say. Relationship, whether it's 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 a loved one, whether it's family, whatever else. Just listen to what they got to say. And if, if you actually listen and and take what they say, it can open up a lot of windows for you. Whether it's a uh, positive or negative, is it negative? You guys, hey, is it is that person truly there for you and giving you the right advice? That's it. That was nice. No matter what others may think of you. Know that it's okay to just be you because just being you sometimes that's hard enough to do. So make sure you get the right individuals around you to help you get through so you can overcome all the obstacles or the demons or the things that bother you too. But you definitely can make it through. That's it. That's all we got for you. This has been Grunt Speak. Speak, Grunt. That's what we do. We come through and we speak to you. Make sure you keep dropping those topics in our DM and our messages to things that you would like me and him to talk about and discuss as we continue to go on this journey, becoming a better version of all of us, being someone that people can trust and you being someone that you can be counted on, too, because a lot of times overindulging too much of these things, people don't be believing in you. Like Whiskey Thoroughly just said, they ain't going to listen to you. They ain't going to trust you. So y'all have a blessed and wonderful night. That's it. That's all I got. Peace.